Let's do a basic Manitowoc lattice boom crawler low chart problem. The problem you see on the screen is very much like those you will see on the exam. You have a data table with information you'll need to solve the problem. You have the question itself. In this case, the question includes some instructions. It says use tip height round its nearest whole number. We'll talk more about that as we go on. You also have four answer choices. Every question will have four answer choices. You'll do your calculations and you'll choose the answer choice that matches your calculations. First thing to do when uh, completing a low chart problem is to identify what the question is asking for. In this case, the question is asking us to calculate the maximum net load or net capacity. And, and I prefer the term net capacity and that's what I'm going to use in my formula. Let's go ahead and write down the formula for net capacity. And I'm going to abbreviate net capacity with NC equals the gross capacity, abbreviated GC, minus deductions. Okay, that's, that's the formula that we're going to use. Simple formula. We need to find the gross capacity and we need to find the deductions. The next step is to draw a diagram that illustrates the cranes set up, the boom length, the radius and all of the different components attached to the crane. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw our diagram and you don't have to be a Picasso for the drawing. Just a simple basic uh, your, see your lines don't even have to be straight, just kind of straight. We've got 90 foot of boom. This line represents your boom. The horizontal line represents your radius. We got a 30 foot radius. And what we're doing here, we're going through the, uh, the data table, uh, just one line at a time. Uh, we have 90 foot of boom, 30 foot of radius, gantry raised, there's no jib. There is a block with eight parts of line. So let's go ahead and draw that in. On the line, I'm not going to draw in every eight parts, all eight parts. That just takes too much time. You're working under time constraints on these exams. So what I want to do is just draw one line, and next to that line, put an 8x. That 8x tells me that there's eight parts line with that block. Okay, back to the block. The block weighs 4,815 pounds. Go ahead and write that in. That's going to be one of our deductions. Okay, there's no ball, and we're continuing down the list. There's no ball. There's rigging that weighs 677 pounds. Let's go ahead and, and draw that in. And for rigging, I just use a little triangle to represent a sling. And the box is not necessary. I like to draw it in just to represent the load. And we've got a load on it. Or we're, we're, determining how much load we can put on it. But the rigging, let's draw a line over here, and the rigging weighs 677 pounds. It's also a good idea to get into the habit of labeling the uh, different components of the crane. This is a simple problem. There aren't as many components to keep track of so it may not be that necessary but when you get into the more complex problems when there's six or eight different components that you're deducting and, and trying to keep track of it's a good idea to to label everything okay so we've got our block we've got our rigging that's it both the block and the rigging are deductions that will go into this part of the formula there's one other deduction that we have to that we have to account for that is the wire rope deduction. On the Manitowoc lattice boom crawler, all wire rope from tip 
to ground is a deduction. This distance, tip to ground, is used to calculate the weight of the wire rope. Um, let me show you how to do that. We got eight parts aligned. Let's go ahead and write our eight in. Now we've got to find our tip to ground distance, and we find that in the load charts. Go over here to the left in the load chart, we find 90 foot boom and 30 foot radius. The third column from the left, there's a heading, boom point, elevation, and feet. That is our tip to ground distance. And 90 foot boom, 30 foot radius is 94.6. Going back up here to this instruction, it says use tip height rounded to the nearest whole number. So we don't work in decimals. We need to round that to the nearest whole number. If the decimal is 0.5 or higher, you round up. If the decimal is 0.4 or lower or less than 0.5, you round down. In this case, 94.6 needs to be rounded up to 95 feet. So let's put our tip to ground distance in here, 95 feet. The third part of identifying the wire rope weight to deduct is the weight per foot of wire rope. That's given to us right here. Wire rope main, two pounds per foot. Let's go ahead and put that in there. We multiply all that out, that's going to be your wire rope deduction. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull our calculator up. And you will have access to a calculator on the exam. It'll be a basic calculator. There won't be any memory functions or square root or anything like that. It'll add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And that's all you need. Okay. 8 times 95 times 2 is 1,520 pounds. This accounts for all the deductions that we're going to use in this part of the formula. But we need to go back and consider our gross capacity. A gross capacity is really the starting point for calculating net capacity. Gross capacity can be chart capacity, or line capacity. Let's talk about line capacity first. A single part line with this Manitowoc crane can pull safely 29,500 pounds. With a single part line, 29,500 pounds. But we have eight parts. We have eight parts lines. So our line capacity is going to be eight times 29,500. Over to the calculator, eight times 29,500 equals 236,000. That is our line capacity, 236,000. And how do I know that 29,500 is the single line pull? Well, that's in the low chart notes. And as you do a lot of practice problems, it's, you're going to commit that to memory. One part line, 29,500. Now let's look at our chart capacity, see what our chart capacity is. For that, we use 90 foot of boom and a 30 foot radius. Our chart capacity is 233,300. Write that in here, 233,300. For our gross capacity in the formula, we use the smallest number, smallest of the line or the chart. In this case, it's 233,300. Let's go ahead and put that in our formula. Going back to our deductions, we need to total up our deductions. And our deductions, these are these numbers here. 
the block, the rigging, and the, uh, the wire rope. Go into the calculator. 1,520 plus 4,815 plus 677 equals 7,012. This is our total deduction, 7,012. And we put that in our formula, 7,012. We are almost there. Now we need to, to subtract 7,012 from 233,300. That will be our net capacity. Let's go ahead and do that. 233,300 minus 7,012 equals 226,288. That is our net capacity. And the net capacity is the size of the load which we can safely lift with this crane when it's at a 90 foot boom and a 30 foot radius. Going up to our problem, or our, I'm sorry, our answer choices, we have 226,288 is one of our answer choices. We'll select that as our answer choice and the problem is complete. A few things to keep in mind. Try to be as neat as possible when drawing your diagram and writing in your information, the weights, the components. When you're writing all this in, try to be as neat as possible. If you write something down where it's, it's not readable, that increases the chance you're going to make a mistake. Be careful with your addition and subtraction also. Also, you always want to write down both your chart capacity and your line capacity. And remember, it's going to be the, the lowest of these numbers. In some cases, line capacity will be lower, and you'll use line capacity as your gross capacity. And, and that's based upon the idea that you can't lift more than your line can safely handle. If your line capacity was 177,000, it doesn't matter that your boom capacity is 233,300, you can only lift 177,000 pounds because that's all your line will handle. So pay attention to, to line capacity and chart capacity. Pay attention to all of the information in the data sheet. There are uh, a few things that you may see on your exam. In this case, the crawlers were extended. Some questions, the, the, the crawlers may be retracted there are two columns to the right of the load chart, the right part of the load chart. We have a column for crawlers retracted and a column for crawlers extended. A lot of mistakes are made on load chart exams or specialty exams because the operator writes down the number from the wrong column. So pay attention to your columns and make sure you're in the right column and on the right row. Also, we've got worked through this fairly slowly in order to, to highlight certain points, slow down, and so everybody will have an understanding of what's going on. But on the exam, you have to be able to move as quickly as possible and still be accurate. You have a limited time. Time constraint may be the most difficult part of the specialty exams because you have a limited amount of time for a, a set number of problems. One way to prepare for that time constraint is to do a lot of practice. You know, 30, maybe even 40 different problems is what you need to work through repeatedly as you're preparing for the exam. Now, if you just have four or five practice problems to work with and you do, you do those over and over again, that's not going to be the same as having 30 or 40 different practice problems. Right, well let's go ahead and, and close the book on this one. Uh, we'll do some more practice problems or illustrations in other videos.